room for one Greatness is being sown into you through the word. Y'all get great teaching here. That's a great seed. That's a that's great material to start with. Then y'all get taught and trained through greatness. You get you have great examples before you. You have all the great and then most importantly, you have the spirit of the great one available to you to live. be so kind. Join me in the book of 1 Corinthians chapter 12. 1 <coughs> Corinthians chapter 12. And we're going to be using for our blueprint for today, we're going to be using 1 Corinthians chapter 12 verses 12 through 27. 1 Corinthians 12 12 through 27. And when you get there, it reads as following. And I'm reading out of the um, Amplified this morning. For just as the body is one and yet has many parts, and all the parts, th though many, form only one body, so it is with Christ. For by one Holy Spirit, we were bat all baptized into one body, spiritually transformed and united together. Whether Jews or Greeks, Gentiles, slaves or free, and we were all made to drink of one Holy Spirit, since the same Holy Spirit fills each life. For the human body does not consist of one part, but of many limbs and organs. If the foot says, because I am not a hand, I am not a part of the body, is it not on the contrary still a part of the body? If the ear says, because I am not an eye, I am not part of the body, is it not on the contrary still part of the body? If the whole pop body were an eye, where would the hearing be? If the whole body were an ear, where would the sense of smell be? But now, as things really are, God has placed and arranged the parts in the body, each one of them, just as he willed and saw fit, with the best balance of function. If they all were single, if they all were a single organ, where would the rest of the body be? Hmm. But now as things really are, there are many parts, different limbs and organs, but a single body. The eye cannot say to the hand, I have no need of you, nor again the head to the feet, I have no need of you, but quite the contrary. The parts of the body that seem to be weaker are absolutely necessary. And as for those parts of the body which we consider less honorable, these we treat with great honor, and our less presentable parts are treated with greater modesty, while our more presentable parts do not require it, but God has combined the whole body, giving greater honor to that part which lacks it, so that there will be no division or discord in the body, that is, lack of adaption of the parts to each other, but that the parts may have the same concern for one another. And if one member suffers, all the parts share the suffering. If one member is honored, all rejoice with it. Now, you collectively, for our Christ body, and individually, you are members of it, each with his own special purpose and function. So God has appointed and placed in the church for his own use. The word of God is blessed. Let us look to the Lord in prayer. Father God, thank you for this day. Thank you for whew, just allowing us another opportunity to Sit at your feet and hear what thus saith the Lord. Father God, we ask you right now, if there's anything unlike you in our lives, expose it, reveal it, and remove it in the name of Jesus. Lord, give us a clean heart, give us a clean mind, restore us the right spirit. Allow us to hear what thus saith the Lord today, Father God. Open our eyes so we can behold the wondrous things within your law. Open our ears so that we can hear what the Spirit of the Lord is saying. And open our hearts so that the seed of the word that is sown today finds good ground, takes root, grows, blossoms, and produces fruit unto righteousness for your glory. Now let me decrease that you may increase. Hide me behind the cross. Speak through lips of clay. Let the words of my mouth 
the meditation of my heart be acceptable in your sight. These things we pray in the master's name of our Lord, Savior, Redeemer. In Jesus' name we do pray. Amen. 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 Praise God. We are many members one body. If you need it and if you are taking notes, which you always should be taking notes, you should always come with a notebook, paper, and pen. Today we are continuing our It's Time to Build series, and today we are doing some bodybuilding. We're doing some bodybuilding. Amen. And I know um, everybody, when they think about bodybuilding in a traditional sense, they think about, you know, lifting weights, lifting weights so that they can acquire a certain goal when it comes, you know, to body building. And the interesting thing about building the body is some, when you're doing it physically, you need to use certain organs in order for other organs to get stronger. If I do squats, I'm working on my legs, but my, my torso and sometimes my arms have to be engaged in order to do the squats. If I'm if I'm if I'm doing sit-ups, sometimes my other to build my uh, my core. Sometimes my other organs have to be engaged. And God knows, no matter what type of exercise you're doing, when you're doing physical bodybuilding, your heart is engaged and your lungs are engaged. So if you try to run, you know, running is the purpose of running is to build up your capacity to breathe and your cardio and to help your blood and your heart be healthy as well. But without your legs, you cannot perform that function. So it's important to understand that when you're building the body, all the organs are necessary, even if you are trying to pinpoint and focus on a specific area. Amen? Amen. 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 And today we want to just keep that in mind when we talk about bodybuilding in the kingdom. Amen? The <coughs> bodybuilding today in the It's Time to Build series. So... The Apostle Paul, and, and we do this because we want to make sure that we are seeing this thing from the proper perspective. So the Apostle Paul and our focal text, it's a letter that he writes to the people of the church located in the city of Corinth. The city is located the city of Corinth. The people that composed the church in Corinth were Gentiles. Gentiles, that means they were not raised in the Jewish traditions that, and those traditions that they weren't religious people. They didn't know or were accustomed to the practices of the Hebrew culture. They would be the equivalent of who we would today identify as the unchurch, mm -hmm. the people that we would call heathens. <laughs> You know, that, that, that's who, that's what the city of Corinth was uh, composed of. Um, they didn't grow up in church. They weren't dragged to church services four times a week with two services on Sunday and every bonus service that came along the way. They didn't have to go to church anniversaries. They weren't at Holy Convocation. They weren't at Revival. They didn't have nothing. If they saw a tent, they was... They was probably going over there to get some pinchos or something. They weren't thinking about, yeah, I did that. They weren't, but it wasn't, no, they thought the circus was coming to town when the tent came. They wasn't thinking about no revival. It's the Universal Soul Circus. You're welcome. Free advertisement right there. But these people had no relationship or understanding of the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. However, however, this doesn't mean that they were not religious. As a matter of, did y'all get that? Yeah, on, Just because you don't affiliate or associate with Christianity, it does not mean you are not religious. There's some, there's a lot of religious people out there, and as a matter of fact, that was one of the many challenges that they had establishing a body of believers in a city like Corinth, because there were all types of religious practices in that city. Idol worship abounded in right. Corinth. Idol worship. It was everywhere. And if you really think about it, in modern times, we see various forms of idol worship in our world. Yep. Voodoo, mm -hmm. zodiac signs, mm -hmm. horoscopes, mm -hmm. yoga with chakra awakening and sage burning and dream catchers, and the list goes on and on. You don't, we don't look, you don't look at it like that, though, do you? Mm -hmm. But you know, Crystal ball readings and tarot cards, and you know, maybe 20 years ago, call them as Cleo. 
Yeah. Yeah, I remember. I knew who, I knew somebody, but I got but 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 that but that that's all idol worship. Those are all people people today. They're so spiritual. Y'all hear that, right? People are spiritual, right? I'm spiritual, right? I'm, and, and and it's funny, but like I'm not religious. I'm spiritual, baby. It's the same thing. Mm. It's the it's the same thing. Come back over here, Brother Bill. Brother Bill is stuck at Miss Cleo. Miss Cleo. I, I, she ain't got a lot of my, my phone call money. My, my 999 a minute. He got that money. But anyway, but so we see that just like the city of Corinth had a lot of idol worship, even today there's a lot of idol worship, uh, idol worship as well. And again, this is just an overview, but I want to make the connection between what we see in the scripture and what we experience today so we can always have application. And it's necessary necessary because these are the types of things that had that idol worship those types of things had influence mm. in the behaviors and the choices of the people of Corinth and those attitudes that were birthed from those influences influences rather it was showing up in the body of Christ in the churches of Corinth so those idol worshiping and those other religious practices had influences on the people in right. the church of Corinth and those influences were showing up in the church back then so if we also have idol worship and influences in the world right now, we have to be careful because those influences have the potential to show up in the church right. today. Right. And we can't have that when we're trying to build a body. So in the church of Corinth, there was confusion because the people were allowing the natural or worldly value system and ideology to undermine God's paradigm of unity by relationship and specifically sonship with him. It's okay. I got y'all. I got y'all. Side note, a paradigm, right? Paradigm for my note takers. A paradigm is a framework containing the basic assumptions ways of thinking, ideals, and methodology that are commonly accepted by members of said community. That's what a paradigm is. I know those of you who are watching on social media are so glad that we have the closed captions because y'all can just see it pop up for you. But that's what a par paradigm. The short version is, it's common ideals we all agree upon. <laughs> common ideals we all agree upon. Examples of, examples of a couple of things in the Christian paradigm are we are saved by grace. Another example is that all humanity is eligible for salvation. Another example is Jesus is the way our relationship is restored with God the Father. These are all parts of our Christian paradigm. You understand? Mm -hmm. You know, the, they're, they're the obvious things. I'm not supposed to murder nobody. I'm supposed to be faithful to my wife. I'm not supposed to worship any God, other gods. Mm -hmm. These are basic understandings that you are supposed to have as a Christian. But Corinth, because there were those who didn't understand or know the basic framework of the Christian paradigm, then the old worldly paradigm became the default. So because they didn't know these basic things, they began to do things that were comfortable, that was common, that they had always done in the past to get by. Mm. They were bringing those old behaviors into the body of Christ. And along with that worldly thinking came division. It came to vision. In Corinthians, in 1 Corinthians 1, Paul speaks about the divisions that were surfacing because the people were thinking that some had greater or better salvation than the next person because of who led them to Christ. Worldly thinking. Mm -hmm. Well, I was saved by Apollos, and Apollo, well, I was saved by Paul. And because Apollos was the, uh, the disciple or the apostle of the apostle Paul, he was, so Paul had mentored and set Apollos in place, they thought they were better than mm -hmm. the people who got saved when Apollos was preaching. It's like, well, I got saved when Paul was preaching, and you got saved when Apollos was preaching, so I'm better than you. Right, right, right. Y'all understand? Yeah. That was actually happening, mm -hmm. and the, it, that was actually happening, and it was causing division in the church because some were thinking they had greater or better salvation hmm. than the next person because 
who led them to Christ. They were like, my, my salvation is better than your salvation. That sounds funny, don't it? In 1 Corinthians <laughs> 3, Paul goes on to tell them because that they were still worldly because they believed that some were more valuable because of who saved them, completely overlooking that Jesus is the one who saves everyone. And every other person is just an extension leading back to him. So it didn't matter. Paul was correcting their ungodly belief system. He's like, it doesn't matter who preached to you. It was Jesus who paid it all. Without Jesus, the preaching was irrelevant. Jesus is the one that saves us all. But this lack of understanding was resulting, watch this, in jealousy and envy in the body of believers. And we understand, we should understand, right, how dangerous jealousy and envy can be. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Jealousy and envy in the body of Christ is poison. It was jealousy that caused Cain to murder Abel. Right? It was jealousy that caused the brothers of Joseph to sell them into slavery. In Job chapter 5 verse 2, it is written, Surely resentment destroys the fool and jealousy kills the simple. That's a, that's a two-edged sword because you got to be simple to be jealous. But I'm going to leave that right there. It says jealousy wow. kills the simple. It doesn't say jealousy kills the wise because if you wise, you wise enough not to be Jealous. Hey, man, y'all won't talk to me. It's okay. And, we go, and, and, and in Proverbs, Proverbs 14, verse 30 states, a heart at peace gives life to the body. A heart at peace gives life to the body. A heart at peace gives life to the body. But envy rots the bones. So uh, envy rots the bones, right? 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 So today, you know, as we doing this build series, we got to deal with this jealousy and envy piece right here, right now. Yeah. Because, And we're going to put a tag on jealousy and envy today. We're going to put a tag on it. We're going to identify it as we build the body of Christ so we can call out this enemy of our assignment. Mm. Because the jealousy and envy are enemies to building the body of Christ. If we were going to define jealous, jealous is, y'all no, catch this, jealous is resentment against a rival or any person enjoying success or an advantage. Resentment against a rival or any person enjoying success or an advantage. Envy is a feeling of discontentment or coveting the advantages, success, or possessions of others. Two words dealing with resentment, dealing, dealing with resentment or discontentment, negative feelings about somebody just because that person is successful. Y'all hear that? Mm -hmm. You feel in some type of way because someone else's hard work and someone else's effort and someone else's discipline and someone else's obedience is causing good things mm. to happen to them. It's funny because when someone's hard work, mm, someone's effort and someone's obedience and someone's discipline and someone's sacrifice seems like it's not working for them, then nobody cares. Right. When you see somebody working their tail off and they're doing their very best to earn an honest living and bad things keep happening to them, y'all don't got nothing to say. Right, right, but right. when those same behaviors, oh my God, mm -hmm. begin to work and turn the situation around and then things start falling into place for them, all of a sudden we resent mm. yeah. their success. It's amazing how a person can do the same things, but the outcome will cause you to feel a different way. Mm. If you ever find yourself having negative feelings because someone else is doing well, you better check yourself for jealousy and envy. And put a tag on it. If you ever start feeling some type of way because someone is doing good because they do good, mm -hmm. <laughs> and you feel bad, you feel angry about the situation because of all of their actions, you need to check yourself for jealousy and envy. Leave it back on task. We had to tag that day, cause, yeah, yeah, I know that's 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 that 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 truth, that's that truth. That that pill is hard to swallow, yeah. 
Well, that's that truth. Yeah. But if, let me get back on task. When, 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 when Paul hears these contentions in the body of Christ, he writes to remind them that they all belong to one single body. So there's nothing to be jealous about. They all belong to one single body and that and that's the body of Christ. And they should be working together. Listen, they should be working together instead of competing against each other because that motive or agenda was tearing down the body instead of building the body up. The people didn't work together. And Paul was trying to tell them, we are building a body. We are one. We are united. And we must work together to accomplish the goal. So if there's jealousy, you guys are not going to compromise and you're not going to come together because you're in competition with each other. We are building a body of Christ and we must check all jealousy and envy. Yes. There is no place for that division birthing behavior in a body of unity. Amen. Amen. There's no place for it. There's no place for jealousy and envy in a body. <sighs> mm. To be strong, we must be united. To be strong, we must be united. Let's, let, let's look at this text. 1 Corinthians 12. I'm going to look at verses 12 and 13. I'm gonna, one by one. Verse 12. For as the body is one and has many members, and all the members of that one body, being many, are one body, so also is Christ. Listen. My arms belong to me. Mm -hmm. They're a part of me. My legs belong to me. They're a part of me. My ears belong to me. They are part of me. I have different parts, but they all serve the same body. I know it sounds simple, don't it? Yeah. They all serve the same body, but they all belong to me. You know, old song, thigh bone connected to, mm. you know, <laughs> thigh bone connected to the hip bone. They all belong to me. Many members, one body. Y'all with me? Mm -hmm. Verse 13, for by one spirit, watch this, we are all baptized into one body, whether it be Jews or Gentiles, whether we be bond or free, and have all been made to drink into one spirit. So watch this, because the spirit of God lives within us and the spirit of God, the Holy Spirit is leading us and because the spirit of God, the Holy Spirit is guiding us, the spirit of God is the common denominator in all of us and, 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 and it's because it is the common denominator that is the thing that causes us to be one body united in his divine nature. The Holy Spirit makes us one body united in his divine nature, or at least we should be. The Holy Spirit lives inside of us, then we all should be united because it would, listen, it's the same blood that saves us, it's the same sacrifice that saves us, it's the thing, it's, it's Jesus, the Son of God that came and accepting him that causes us to be one in the Holy Spirit that lives in us. Watch this, 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 16. Paul has already stated that they should already that they should all have the mind of Christ. When I say that, it's because we're deeper in the letter than where Paul originally states this. This is 1 Corinthians 2. Our text comes from 1 Corinthians 12. So Paul's already stated that we should have the mind of Christ. Verse 16 in 1 Corinthians 2 reads, For who hath known the mind of the Lord that he may instruct him? But we have the mind of Christ. But we have the mind of Christ. So when we're doing the kingdom bodybuilding, when we're doing the kingdom bodybuilding, the first thing we must do is build a, to build a unified body is to have a unified mind. We have to have a unified mind. I don't know what you came to Christ for. I don't know what you joined a, 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 a religious group for. I don't know what you, 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 you jumped into a religious group for a religious faction. But if you are designed to be a part of the body of Christ, you have to have a unified mind. A unified mind. It's the paradigm thing again. We must all be working within the same framework of principles. Mm -hmm. you, can't be, you, can, you can't be coming here to, to, to get a job because that's not a part of the paradigm. You, you may get a job out of it. You may connect to somebody, but your motivation, because your motivation has to be within the paradigm of the will of God. And we can't, don't, don't, be, don't be joining a religious group because you're looking for a wife or a husband. Mm. 
Don't be looking, don't be joining a religious group because you're looking for someone to pay the bills. That's not part of the paradigm. That's not part. You, you, and if you, if you don't have, if you're not working under the same mindset as the group, it's going to be very hard to build a body. I can't go into the gym one morning and say I'm going to work my arms and then immediately start doing calf extensions and hamstring extensions and lunges and 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 and, and squats because those things work my legs. So my mind is saying arms, but my actions are saying legs. You all understand? Mm -hmm. You have to have unity in our mind. And we must intentionally purpose in our hearts to agree with God. We must intentionally in our hearts purpose to agree with God. Here we go. And many times agreeing with God will put you out of agreement with yourself. Did you hear that? Many times agreeing with God will put you out of agreement with yourself. Your previous logic will stop making sense. Your former method won't mesh with your present mission. Your previous logic has to go out the door because your previous logic is in contradiction to your present mission. You must agree to let God be right and let every man be wrong, including you, because we are building a body of Christ, not a body of men. We are building an ecclesia, E-K-K-L-E-S-I-A, which is a called out assembly or congregation. We are building an ecclesia. Now, if we are building an ecclesia, which is a called out assembly, if we're being called out of something, watch this. What have we been called into? Mm. If you're being called out of something, you have to understand you're being called out of something to be called into. And what we're building is a community. And we, some of us, we got to understand that we've been called out of darkness and into a marvelous light. We've been called out of exile to be embraced by eternity. We've been called out of abandonment and adopted by Abba. We've been called out of rebellion and into relationship with the Redeemer. We've been called out of slavery and into sonship. Called out of hurt and into eternal hope of glory. Called out from a life of despair and into a kingdom love affair. Yes. To build a body of Christ, you must accept being called out and embrace what you're being called into and always the, t the issue is people want to be embraced with what they're calling being called into we want to embrace the marvelous life we want to embrace eternal life we want to embrace Abba Father we want to embrace um, the Redeemer but the, where the rubber meets the road is when we're called out we don't like being called out who likes being called out nobody likes being called out he says we're being called out. The body, of the ecclesia is a called out body of born again believers. And a lot of times we don't ever get to be called in because we don't like the called out part. Because when we get called out, we it exposes our shortcomings. When we get called out, we're being instructed that where we are, we need to move. Where we're at is not where we're supposed to be. I'm calling you out of that situation. We don't like to get called out of that We don't like to get called out on anything. Mm. Brother Ross would say people don't like to get called out on their sugar honey iced tea. <laughs> 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 because when you get called out on your bull jive, mm. you, get you get exposed. Mm -hmm. And when you get exposed, when you ain't ready to deal with those truths, you begin to project your insecurities yeah. on other people to make you feel okay about where you are in the darkness mm. because you, you've been called out so now instead of dealing with being called out so you can get to being called in instead you project your mess elsewhere mm. and that's the problem because the call out is to help us locate where we are and eliminate what must be abandoned because there is no use for those things that we are into when we're coming into the body that's being built. 
Whatever God is calling you out of, you need to leave it there because there's no room for it in the ecclesia that God right, is calling right. you to be a part of. Your lying, your, your, your manipulation, mm -hmm. when you're being Come called on. out of those things, it's because you can't bring them into the body because they are not going to be conducive in an environment that is building a body. Those are things. You come into a body of truth with deception, it's going to tear it down, not build up the body. If you come into the body with, 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 with manipulation in a body that w w walks in obedience, you're going to tear it down. Mm. And we're trying to build yes. the body. Yes. Productive bodybuilding requires the elimination of those things that would stump, stymie, stagnate, stutter, stumble, or stop growth. If you want to be productive in bodybuilding, you have to eliminate the things right. that are going to be counterproductive to bodybuilding. Right. Uh, Y'all know me. I, I work out. Got the gym at the crib and everything. But some of the things that stumped and stymied my growth were my diet. So I had to, and, and, and listen, everybody was always calling me out on my stuff. Half of y'all was calling me out on my stuff. The other half was like, that looks delicious. Because y'all was, was happy with what I was eating because y'all wanted me to make that for y'all. But the reality is if I wanted my health goals to be met, I had to, be, I, had to, I had to respond to the call out that all of my eating wasn't healthy. It was not conducive to the person, the body that I was trying to build. And it wasn't about all physical. Some of the things I was trying to build was better blood pressure. Oh. Some of the things I was trying to build was better cholesterol. Some of the things I was trying to build was the potential for me to not suffer from diabetes like so many people in my family. Those were my goals. So, so even though I was in the gym and on the treadmill and on the spin bike and on the bench press and doing the crunches and the curls and everything, there were still things that I needed to come out of so that I can have maximum benefit and I would no longer be stymied or stagnant or stumbling in my growth in accomplishing what I was trying to build. The Bible says in 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 7, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. Old things are passed away. Behold, all things become new. So if you're into this ecclesia, old things are dead. Right. Old things are passed away. Seriously, and, 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 and I don't know why when we come into this new creation, we like to carry around a bag of bones. Mm. You like to carry around, like, like, think about. I want you right. to really. I want you to get graphic with it. Would you carry around a bag of dead corpses? Maybe a bag of dead rats or mice or, or, or vermin. Like, 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 like the stuff that's supposed to be dead to have, but you're carrying around in your new life. Would you go up in Lord and Tellers or or Saxon Fifth Ave with, with, like, 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 if you, if you, if you, if you became independently wealthy, if you, if you hit the mega ball like so many of y'all trying to hit, and you just won billions and billions of dollars, would you walk? Would, would, would you? But, but think about it. Would you put a bag of of dead bodies in the back seat of your Lamborghini. You wouldn't do that. But that's exactly what we're doing when we're walking in the, or we're trying to walk in the newness of God, but we're carrying around an old dead mindset, old dead behavioral set. And it keeps us from growing. And it keeps us from edifying. We have to allow those things to be dead so we can walk into the newness that God has prepared for us. Hebrews 12.1 instructs us to lay aside every weight and the sin which so easily besets us. I, it, this ain't, I, I shouldn't even have to really do a lot here. Really? Just, just examine yourself. You gave your life to Christ. How did you lay aside the weight? <laughs> did you stop carrying the baloney? Did you stop carrying the minutia? Or are you still lingering <laughs> with that feces in your life? <laughs> Make me work hard. <laughs> but y'all so, but, so but, but 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 y'all need to get it. Yeah. You know, we talk different on the L. I'm gonna maintain mine, but I'm gonna I'm gonna get as close to the point so you understand. You understand what the word of God is saying. Lay aside every weight and sin which do it so easily beset us. Y'all walking around and y'all still holding on to that fertilizer. You need to get it together. Mm. <sighs> hmm. 
got Corinthians speaking to us. We got Hebrews speaking to us. And Travis Green said it like this. Take everything. I don't want it. I don't need it. I just want you. I just want you. You need that mindset. You need that mindset that God just take everything. I don't want it. I don't need it. I just want you. When you get to the place where you just want God, all of the stuff that you really need, that you're willing to give up, it no longer becomes a hindrance. It no longer becomes an idol. It no longer becomes the object of your pursuit. And so when God becomes the object of your pursuit, you can have the other stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You can have the other stuff because now you've put it in the proper place yeah. of priority. Mm. <sighs> we have that right mindset. So when we're doing the kingdom build, you have to have a proper mind, a proper paradigm, <laughs> and... Our third point, a desire to bind. Mm. When building this body, we need a new mind with a new paradigm and a desire to bind. You gotta have the mind of Christ, mm -hmm. you have to have the framework of Christ, and you have to have a desire to bind. Mm. Let me get back to the text. Verse 24 of our text, chapter 12, 1 Corinthians, verse 24. For our common parts have no need, here it is, but God hath tempered the body together, having giving more abundant honor to that part which lacked, that there should be no schism in the body, but that the members should have the same care for one another. And whether one member should suffer, all members suffer with it, and, or one member be honored, all members rejoice with it. I want to draw your attention to the phrase in verse 24 that read, but God had tempered the body together. The King James translation uses the word tempered. Other translations use comp compose, combine. Put together, unites, constructed, blended, arranged, built up. All these terms imply that there is an interconnection among the parts. Building the body requires us to yield our individual members unto God, as stated in Romans 6, that your body parts can be bonded with all other members of the body. You have to have a desire to be bound. Bind. The word bind means to fasten or secure with band or bond. <laughs> To fasten or secure with a band or bond. That's what bind means. Watch this now. Matthew 18, 18. Matthew 18, 18 reads, Whatsoever, or verily I say unto you, Whatsoever ye shall bind on earth shall be bound in heaven. And whatsoever ye shall loose on earth shall be loosed in heaven. Watch this. Here, here's the question. What are you fastening yourself to on earth? What are you binding yourself to on earth? Because if you're binding yourself to something on earth, the scripture says in eternity, you're going to be connected with that thing. Mm -hmm. Whatever you bind yourself to on earth, I'm, you're going to be bound to in heaven. What are you connecting yourself with on earth? Are you binding yourself to the kingdom of God by staying in fellowship and agreement and covenant and relationship with God's body? Is that what you're connecting to? Or are you just connecting with everybody and anybody? Are you binding yourself to shady people? Mm. Are you binding yourself to shady behavior? Are you binding yourself to shady antics? Are you binding yourself to shady opportunities? Because if you're binding yourself to those things on earth, whatsoever you bind yourself to on earth, I'm going to bind you to in heaven. You stay connected, you stay connected with shady people. It's your choice. Mm -hmm. It's your choice. You, the, 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 so instead, let me, let me flip it to you like this. Then I can't connect you with the right people. Right. If you're choosing to be connected on earth with shady people, I can't connect you to the right people. Mm -hmm. If you're choosing to stay connected to shady opportunities, don't get mad when you get overlooked. See, a lot of that jealousy right, right, and envy right, stuff right. comes because of who you've binded yourself to. Ooh. 
you binded yourself to the wrong group. So then when the right group comes along, you wonder why you're not being accepted or why you're not being introduced or why you're not being allowed to be involved in that movement. It's because you binded yourself to the wrong group. And so you've disqualified yourself. So what you have to do is you have to lose yourself. You have to lose yourself from that group so you can bind yourself to the other group. See, you can't bind yourself to one thing because you're stuck. And then you can't try to bind yourself to something else because you already connected. So you got to lose yourself so you can be binded to the things of God and set free and liberated from the things. And I, I love that. When it says what you loose on earth, I will loose it. So when you loose yourself from addiction, God says, I got you covered. When you loose yourself from poverty, God says, I got you covered. When you loose yourself from the toxic relationships, God says, now I can connect you with some godly relationships. Now I can connect you and bind you with some sobriety but it's up to you to bind or loose yourself first mm. you have to have the desire to be binded and connected and a part of the body of Christ if you want to be a part of the kingdom body building <sighs> can't be a strong body of Christ when you are engaged in exercising the sin body mm. over and over and over again and I'm going to beat this drum to the sticks break the skin pops and just just the drum don't drum no more over and over again we're going to kill this principle we're going to drill this principle into your head what fellowship does light have with darkness Flag on the play. Come on. Flag on the play. If you have, if you're supposed to be light and you kicking it with, listen, listen. What fellowship do the Eagles have with the Cowboys? Flag Ooh. on the play. Flag on the play. I got it right now, now, now. Don't take it personal, y'all. We in Philly. I just got to do it the way God told me to give it. What fellowship? How, like, how do you get bitter and sweet water from the same <laughs> stream? Flag on the play. Flag on the play. <sighs> Illegal procedure. Mm. <laughs> Flag on the play. Watch this. Watch this. When the when 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 the when the apostle Peter right when when the apostle Peter was dealing with Ananias and Sapphira right mm -hmm. and their and their attempt to they they, they brought they they sold a piece of property right and they said that they sold the piece of property for a certain amount of money but it was not true. So when the Apostle Paul is dealing with them concerning this matter, they were trying to portray themselves mm. as righteous with worldly tactics. Oh, y'all, mm. get this, get this. They were trying to be holy because everyone else had gave their money. Right. But they were implying and implementing worldly tactics because they were being deceptive. They said this was all the money, but the truth is they only gave a portion mm. of the money, right? The worldly tactics were working in the background. Oh my goodness, but I want you to understand that what you do in darkness, God will expose. Yes. He'll call you out on it. Oh, yes. there it went. Yes. Here it went again. They were in the background, the, and, and, and so watch this. He says, the Apostle Peter says to him in Acts chapter 5, verse 3, Why hath Satan filled thine heart to lie to the Holy Ghost? Mm. Yeah. He said, he goes on to tell them, whatever you sold that thing for, it was yours. Mm -hmm. You didn't have to lie about it and say you gave us all the money. You could have said, here's some of the money. It was theirs. It was their possession. He said, but because you wanted to seem just as holy as everybody else who sold everything and gave everything, you conspired to lie to the Holy Spirit. They were using a worldly mindset to try to accomplish a kingdom goal. Mm. He said, how has Satan filled your heart to try to lie to the Holy Ghost? How dare we attempt to lie to the very spirit of truth himself while claiming to be his people? How can you live a life that is that of a charlatan and say that you are of the household of truth. Mm. Like, 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 <laughs> that you, how can you say that you are full of the spirit of truth and you function in deceit, mm. flag on the play? And it's a lack of maturity, 
a lack of understanding that must be eradicated so we can build this body of Christ. We have to detach, listen, talked about binding and loosening. We have to loose ourselves. We have to detach from every influence, yes. from every person, place, or thing, pay attention, that is in conflict. Right. I want to be clear. We have to loose ourselves from the influence of every person, place, or thing that is in conflict with our covenant with Christ as we build the body. Mm -hmm. You got to step away. If you have friends, if you have families, if you have some workplace practices that are in conflict, you have to step away while you build the body, while you grow, mm -hmm. and while you become mature. Right, right. When you transition from milk to meat, and when you get stronger, then you may be able to be around those people and be a light to them. But when your legs are still like, when you like Bambi walking on that ice and you just uh, you just young trying to learn how to walk, you 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 can't continue, <laughs> you can't continue to run with wolves while you're trying to walk like a lamb. Mm. You gotta detach. If you do not detach, you're going to remain contaminated mm. and you're going to bring contamination into the body that you are trying to become a part of. And that's not happening. You're gonna constantly be called on it, you're gonna constantly be called out upon it, and then you're gonna feel some type of way because you don't want to change. Yeah. And that's not and guess what? It is the assignment of the people that God places in leadership to call you out on that stuff. Bishop Pendleton, he, we were at men's Bible study yesterday, and one thing he said from the lesson, he said, it is the responsibility of the people in authority to maintain the order. Right. To maintain the order. He, <laughs> he said, leaders don't take orders from subordinates. Leaders aren't trying to win the approval of subordinates. Right. So listen, that, that, that's tough. That's a tough piece, right? But the reality is leaders are leaders for a reason. And leaders have a responsibility that subordinates do not have because mm -hmm. leaders have to answer to leaders. Mm -hmm. Leaders have leaders that they answer to. So if you're a subordinate and the leader is checking you in righteousness and in godliness right. with right. the Bible, you can get all upset all you want. But don't get mad at that leader for showing you the truth of the matter and where you are because the reality is they're trying to grow you, they're trying to groom you, they're trying to develop you and cultivate you so you can get to what to the place you're being called into as a part of the body of Christ. Finally, I'm almost done. 1 Corinthians chapter 12 verses 21 through 22. And the eye cannot say to the hand, I have no need of thee, nor again the head to the feet, I have no need of you. Nay, much more those members of the body which seem to be more feeble are necessary. Every member, every member, every member, every person is needed and valuable in the body of Christ. Amen. Every member is needed and valuable in the body of Christ. And this body, listen, is not a part <laughs> of the organ donor program. Mm. We're not. We're, we're, we're not. A, we're not. We're not. We're not donating our arms. We're not donating our hearts. We're not donating our people to the world. Right. That's not what this is. So you don't come to the body of Christ and then lend yourself out to the world. Mm. That's not what the body of Christ is. You say, no, I'm not putting any of that on my license plate. Right. I'm staying a part of this body forever. Yes. I'm not, like, I, listen, listen, you know, people be needing organs donated to sustain their life in the natural. That, let, let, let me break it down to you. That, that the ecclesia is not a part of the organ donator program. It doesn't have to be because Jesus donated his whole body. Mm -hmm. Let me explain to you. We don't have to donate anything because Jesus donated his own body and his blood for our sins. So there is no longer a point in us giving ourselves to the world any longer. Right. Jesus left glory donated every square inch of him for us. We don't have to continue to donate ourselves. Amen. Amen. All members are needed in this body and are essential to the efficient 
function of the body. My legs carry my body. My hands deliver food to my mouth. My brain delivers instructions to my organs. My backside gets rid of waste. <laughs> my eyes help me see. My ears let me hear all different parts, but are all important to the function of my body. And I want to keep and maintain. I don't want a prosthetic. Mm. I don't want a prosthetic and I don't want and God doesn't want prosthetics in the body of Christ. He doesn't want pieces that can, he can attach it. Oh my God, don't be a prosthetic in the body of Christ. Yeah. Don't be a prosthetic in the body of Christ because let me tell you something about a prosthetic. Even though it looks the part, right. mm. even though it looks the part, there's no life in it. <laughs> even though it looks the part and it can do some of the things that an actual organ can do, at the end of the day, it ain't real. Don't be a prosthetic in the body of Christ. We are trying. God wants real people. God wants real soldiers. God wants genuine sons and daughters in the body of Christ. There's not. This isn't a. This isn't an attached, detached, strap on, strap off. Mm. Wow. No prosthetics <sighs> in the body. In the same way that my body parts come together to service the goals of my body, my, my hands and my mind and my legs, my feet, my heart, in the same way we all should service the kingdom of God, even in our different ways, with our different gifts and our different uh, abilities, if the same spirit is guiding us, then we'll be moving to the same goal, which is to do the will of the Father. Which is to do the will of the Father. You may not ever preach behind the pulpit, but you can preach in your walk with God. You may never, the, sometimes the only way that you can introduce somebody to Christ is by them seeing the love of Christ active in your life on a daily basis. We are each to be using our individual abilities to accomplish a common goal. It's time to build a body. It's time to build one kingdom. It's time to build one people. It's time to build one purpose, individual, one nation, really under God. Come on, come on. <laughs> with liberty, hallelujah. Because with the spirit of God, there is liberty yes. and freedom. Because who the Son has set free is free indeed yes. for all of the body of Christ. Did y'all catch that? Yes. Did you see what I did there? That's what it means to be united. That's what it means to really be a body. We are bound together with the common agape love of the Father. Put your hands together if you were blessed on this day. Praise God. For the word, it's time to build the body of Christ. And in order to build the body of Christ, we need a new mind yes. with a new paradigm and a desire to bind, to be connected to the true vine. <laughs> in yes. Jesus' name. Let's pray. Father God, we thank you for this day. We thank you for just blessing us and keeping us, watching over us and protecting us. Protect us from danger seen and unseen. And God, we just pray right now. Hallelujah, that you give us the right mentality, Father God, and the trust, Father God. Let us stop stepping outside. Let us stop disconnecting. Let us stay connected, Father God. Let us stay connected in our understanding. Let us continue to, to drink from your fountain of wisdom, God, so that we can become more informed as to what the framework, the paradigm, and the mind of God looks like and desire and the motivation for what we do and why we do it is, Lord. Hallelujah. So that we can... We can benefit from, from the benefits of the body, Father God, so that we can benefit from the, the safety and the refuge and the peace and the joy, Father God, and that there will be no discord in the body of God. Well, we're not in competition with, with each other, but we are partnership. And when one of us suffers, Lord, we all suffer. When one of us mourns, we all mourn. But when one of us is victorious, we all share in the victory and we all benefit from the spoils, Father God. Let us get to the place where we can celebrate each other. 
where we can celebrate each other. And when one of us is doing bad, help us to have sympathy and empathy for each other. And when one of us is doing good, let us be their biggest cheerleaders, Father God. But let jealousy and envy die today. Yes. Let jealousy and envy be called out today in the name of Jesus. Let us be happy for our brothers and sisters. Let us be happy for our siblings. Let us be, let us rejoice, hallelujah, in those that do well. And if those of them that are in the struggle, Father God, let us be an aid to them, Father God, so that we can all move in the right direction together. In help, Father God, in wisdom, in strength, in courage, hallelujah, in joy, in peace, in prosperity, Father God, that you get the glory, hallelujah, that people can see the miracles in every area of our life that the hand of God bestows upon his children. Lord, protect us throughout the week. Keep us safe from hurt, harm, and danger. Have thine own way. In Jesus' name we do pray. Amen. 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 Amen.